Hi, beautiful. Over the years, I've had so many clients tell me that they have an oily scalp, but really dry ends. They're wondering how that could possibly be. Like, shouldn't all my hair be oily? Or why do I have combination hair? Is combination hair an actual thing? What is wrong with me? Brad, help me. And I'm like, I got you. There is actually a cure to combination hair. And I'm gonna tell you exactly what you're doing wrong with your hair care routine that is making your hair oily and dry. That's like the worst combination I can ever think of. Ooh. Okay, first. First, I want to see how much you know about a good hair care routine. And this is all going to make sense why I'm asking these questions towards the middle slash end of the video. Let's measure your knowledge first, shall we? So get a pen and paper and get your thinking caps on and let's do this. A pop quiz! Woo! Let's start off with an easy one. How often should you shampoo your hair? A once a week, B, once a day, or C, whenever it feels dirty. What do you think the answer is? If you chose C, you'd be correct. Let's move on to the second question. When you're shampooing your hair, how many times should you shampoo it? A, once, B, two times, or C, until your shampoo suds and your hair feels clean. If you guessed C, again, it was C again, yeah. You would be correct. Okay, <laughs> cool, good job. And if you didn't get that right, you don't watch enough of my videos, do you? Number three, what part of the head should you focus the shampoo on? This one seems a little easy, but we'll see. A, scalp and mids. B, scalp only. Or C, your ends only. Did you get this one? Are you ready for the answer? The answer is B, scalp only. Number four, is professional shampoo actually better than drugstore shampoo? A, yes. B, sometimes. Or C, no. The answer is B, sometimes. All right, great. Did you get that? You got that wrong. Five, where should you focus the conditioner? A, anywhere your hair feels dry. B, your mids and ends. Or C, ends only. The answer is B, B again. We love B today, and we love C. A is not getting a lot of love. Number six, how often should you use a hair mask? A, every time you wash your hair. B, once a week. Or C, once a month. The answer is B, because B is for Brad, and for the right answer. Number seven, when should you apply your hair products after showering? A, right after, while your hair is still damp. B, once your hair is 50% dry. Or C, when your hair is sopping wet, before towel drying? The answer is A. A, 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 A. Woo, we're almost done with the quiz. How you doing? You okay? Mm, I don't know, I feel like some of you might be a little bit scared right now. What products are best for dry hair? A, oils, B, leave-in conditioners, or C, hair masks? If you chose all of those as your answers, you'd be correct, it was a trick question. Number nine, what part of your hair should you focus your hydrating products on? A, your ends only, B, all over, or C, your mids and ends? If you chose C, you would be correct. Correct. Uh, 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 uh. And number 10, one of the most important ones. How often should you clean your hairbrush? A, every time you use it. B, every other time you use it. Or C, whenever it's dirty. The answer is C. Did you get that one? Now tally up how many you got right and how many you got wrong. And if you got less than nine of these correct, you failed at Brad Mondo's hair school class for the oily and dehydrated ends peoples. So you better listen up. And I'm only giving you that one freebie because I feel nice today. You have to get a hundred in my class or else you fail. All right, let me teach you some things on how to combat oily and dry hair, AKA combination hair. How to shampoo an oily scalp 101. Let's get into it. Now, if you have an oily scalp, up, let's talk about how many times you should shampoo it. I like to say shampoo your hair whenever it feels dirty. I've honestly said different in the past. I'm like, go as long as you possibly can. But since then, I've learned a lot more about hair and I can confidently say that you should just shampoo whenever the fuck it feels dirty. If that's every other day for you, go for it. If that's once a week for you, go for it. If that's once a month for you, go for it. <laughs> that's a little pushing it a little bit, but some people can honestly go that long. If you have an oily scalp, you probably want to be shampooing your hair every other day or every couple days. 
days. I prefer you not to shampoo your hair every single day because then you just get into issues where you're over stripping your hair and your scalp of its natural oils that protects your scalp and makes your hair healthy and delicious. And we just need some of that goodness there. You know, we can't just be completely stripping it raw. So start there. Let's work on that. I really do believe that there's such thing as training your hair. So if your hair is too oily and you wash it every single day and it's every day, it's just oily, 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 try and extend it to two days in between washes, then three, then four, and so on. Your scalp will start to regulate its oil production and it'll get easier to go longer between washes and your hair will become less oily in between those washes. And if you have an extreme oily scalp problem, please try and use a clarifying shampoo whenever your hair is super dirty. Even up to once a week, you can be doing this, but if your hair feels like it's being overstripped or your scalp feels tight after your hair dries, stop using the clarifying shampoo. It might be too much for your scalp to handle. So we talked earlier about how many times you should shampoo your hair if you have an oily scalp. And I said two times. That is because the first shampoo, you're really just getting in there. You're getting that surface layer of dirt and oil and grime off of your scalp. The shampoo is collecting it and washing it down your hair. If you have a lot of that oil on your scalp, one shampoo might not be sufficient enough to get all that oil and grime and dirt and nasty stuff off your scalp in one go. Shampoo can only do so much. I know for me, I usually have to shampoo my hair twice. Because I use so many pomades, which are oily and greasy, I tend to not be able to get my hair feeling clean and soft after one shampoo. I then go in with the second one and I have a much easier time distributing that product all around my scalp and getting a nice suds going on. Now, your head doesn't need to look like a bubble bath in order to know that your shampoo is working. You really just need a suds. You want it to definitely be foaming up in some capacity in order for your shampoo to work. After that second shampoo, once you rinse your hair, you should feel like it's much softer, much more lightweight, and almost feels kind of thinner. I know my hair is very clean when it feels like it's shrunk down like half of the thickness it was before because a lot of that thick feeling comes from my hair products. All the buildup on my scalp, it kind of adds more weight and heaviness to my head. When I'm shampooing it though, I can definitely feel that my hair is back to its normal state and back to a little bit more of a finer feeling. And I can really feel that my scalp has been shampooed and it is clean and it is ready to go to the conditioning. However, if you notice your hair is getting very dry from doing two shampoos, maybe pull it back and just do the one. If you do not use any hair products ever, you don't put anything on your scalp, you don't touch your hair like that, one shampoo might be enough for you, but try both and see what works best. Okay, we talked about shampooing your scalp only, and that is because when you're shampooing your hair, you wanna focus up on this region. The shampoo is made to collect those oils and collect that dirt and wash it right down your hair strands, down through the drain, into the sewer, into wherever else it goes after that, because I'm not sure. And then we drink it, and then we shower in it again. It's really quite interesting how that works. Make sure you're taking your fingers like this, not your nails, your fingers, and you are doing circular motions on your scalp, okay? If you feel like there's literally no shampoo on your scalp at that point, put more on. You really gotta use enough shampoo as well. That's super important to getting your scalp oils balanced and healthy so you don't have this insane oily scalp problem. Put the shampoo on. Ba -da 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 -da. Dun, 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 dun. work all the way up here on the sides and then work in the back. Sometimes when I get to the back, I'm like, I need more back here. And I do a little dollop more. Get the back, get the back. All right, it doesn't feel super clean. Then we rinse, right? Because we just learned before that we do two shampoos. We do it again. Boop, 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 boop. Now, the reason why I say don't use your fingernails is because you can cause irritation, which causes your scalp to freak the fuck out, which can cause your scalp to overproduce those oils and things to help cure the cuts and the scratches on your scalp. Our skin is an amazing thing. It heals itself. But in order to heal itself, it needs to produce things in order to help it heal. In between those two shampoos, make sure you're thoroughly rinsing your hair. Get it under warm water. Really rake your fingers in there the same way you shampooed it and put your head under there. Get every little side of your hair and make sure all of that shampoo has floated down your hair down the drain. Then we did it all over again one more time, ensuring that all that shampoo is out and you're using warm water to rinse it out. And please shampoo your hair with warm water, not freezing cold. I know some of you guys do that. You torture yourself with that. I don't know why you do it, but you do it. There's a lot easier ways to make sure your hair doesn't become damaged than shampooing with cold water. That's a tough one. All right, now let's talk about a controversial subject, which is high-end versus low-end shampoo. I don't know everything about shampoos. I know how to formulate one. I don't know what the ingredients are of every
every single shampoo in the market. I do know some and I do know others. From what I can tell you is that a lot of shampoos from the drugstore that are very inexpensively priced, there's usually a reason for that. And the reason is usually because they are watered down. I've met people who had to shampoo their hair three times in a row to get it clean with a drugstore shampoo. And with professional shampoo, they only have to do it twice and with way less product. That is because the professional shampoos are way less diluted and you're getting better ingredients for your money. Typically, the more you pay, the better the product. Not always, but a lot of the time in the world of beauty, okay? Because some ingredients really do cost a lot of money to put in products. I know because I always end up choosing the ingredients that cost so much to go in my products and then we're fine on the profit margins because I want that ingredient and that ingredient only and I do you know sometimes you can't get everything you want also a lot of the drugstore shampoos contains harsh surfactants okay and those can overstrip your scalp which then ends up either drying out your scalp making it super itchy and scaly or what we're talking about today which is making it way too oily your scalp can freak out either way and I'm not trying to say every single drugstore shampoo is bad there are definitely drugstore shampoos that are incredible and very high quality except they're also not very cheap I would say that the ones that are extremely cheap there's always a reason for that my dad always said you don't get nothing for nothing and I find out every day that that is so fucking true. Now let's focus on those dry, crusty ends. Let's talk about how to use our conditioner properly to make sure that these don't get more oily and this doesn't get more dry. Now choosing the right conditioner is vital. And if you have dry hair, you really want to get those oils in those ends and those butters like a shea butter. Oof, they are so good. We want to lock that moisture in while your hair is sopping wet. This is so important. While you're in the shower, after you shampooed your hair and you got that scalp nice and sparkly clean, we're gonna wanna wring out the water so that the conditioner just has a little something more to grab onto. We don't want it to be dry. No, 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 we don't, we don't want that. Now take your conditioner of choice. I would definitely recommend something like Hydroglow if you have dry hair, super great, packed with oils, packed with nutrients that is great for hydrating dry, brittle hair. The most important thing with conditioner is that you're evenly saturating all of your hair strands. If you have thick hair, please separate it. Don't just put one glob of conditioner over everything. Really separate that hair into four quadrants and get that conditioner on all the mids and lengths of your hair, not on your scalp. I'm sure none of you guys are doing that, but if you are, stop, because that is definitely making your scalp oily. We want to just focus on the mids and ends with a good conditioner. This also relates back to what we talked about before with shampoos from the drugstore. Conditioners can also be watered down. If they're super runny and jelly, kind of, you're probably not gonna get a good conditioning effect and your hair is not gonna feel soft and luxurious and hydrated. If your hair is super dry, you wanna go for more thick, buttery, creamy consistency. Buttery is not the right word for this but creamy. You want to feel a sense of slip on your hair. So if you're kind of losing that slip and it just feels like water on your hair, you need a little more conditioner. Put more on your hands and run it through the rest of your hair. If you do have that thicker hair, make sure you're using a wide tooth comb to get all that conditioner distributed evenly throughout your head. And then just rinse with warm water. Since your hair is dry, and that's why you're here today, I like to leave just a little bit of that conditioner in my hair. I like to rinse, 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 and then pull my head back right before all of that conditioner is gone so that my hair still retains all that moisture and has a little coating of oil still left on it. We don't want to rinse it all away, okay? This brings us to hair mask time. Oh God, I love a hair mask. I like to use my hair masks once a week. What hair masks really are is a much more intensely concentrated version of a conditioner. And that is why we can't use them too often because they are intense. They will weigh your hair down and they will make your hair greasy if they're overused. But if you use them properly, they will definitely help maintain a balanced moisture level. Same as the conditioner, we want something that has oils, you know, hyaluronic acid, shea butters, something that is extremely thick and is really gonna put a coating on your hair to keep that moisture locked in even past the shower when your hair is dry. I did in fact just come out with a brand new hair mask called Hydrify that is perfect for anybody with extremely dry hair. It is our max intensity hydration treatment. Our Hydrify mask is gonna restore your moisture levels, make your hair extremely shiny and make it super, super soft. It is so luxurious and so thick. 
Oh, this is when you know it's thick. It is not gonna fall off my finger. The base of this product is straight up shea butter. Like it is intensely hydrating. When I was formulating this, I was like, how much moisture can I put in there? And I was like, no, 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 I want more. And it took us literally 25 samples to get this right. It is just an all around incredible mask for those of you with extremely dry and brittle hair. If you use Hydrify once a week, you will see an immediate difference in how hydrated, how moisturized, and how how soft and shiny your hair is. Trust me, I mean, look at this. Look at how incredible her hair looks and look at how easy it is to rake my hands through a hair. Oof. It is your savior, for real. And it's now available to shop at xmonohair.com. So excited to see what you guys think about this product because it is my favorite. Then again, they're all my favorite because I literally created them. Other products I love for dry hair are a leave-in conditioner. Super great for locking in that moisture. Make sure you apply this when your hair is still damp. Hair oils are especially great for ends because think about your ends where they're literally cut. The ends of your hair are wide open. It can kind of let any moisture fall down to the ground. Okay, so we want to lock that moisture in and the oil is perfect to do that job because it is extremely thick and heavy and it can really put a coating on those ends to ensure that moisture is not falling out of the bottom of your hair. I also love a heat protectant because heat tools can really grab onto that moisture, suck it up and pff, your hair is frizzy and dry and gross. So protect it, use our oils, use a conditioning mist. To sum it up for dry hair, Hair, hair mask, conditioning mist, oil, and a heat protector. Perfect combo. When you're using these products, if you have an oily scalp and dry ends, it's going to be super vital that you do not apply any of these products to your scalp. When you're even applying your conditioning mist, please focus it on the mids and ends of your hair. Also the oil, don't ever start up here and go down. Always start at the bottom and don't work your way too far up because you'll accidentally put it on your scalp and you'll wonder why your hair is always oily and that is the reason why because you are applying products that are super hydrating when you already have a moisturized scalp and you don't need the weight up there. It's already weighed down by your natural oils. So focus on the mids and ends. Also, if your hair is still getting weighed down somehow and you're only spraying your conditioning mist on your mids and ends, try just using less. Another really important thing to consider that we went over earlier is cleaning your brush. Clean your damn brush! The amount of brushes I see that are just trapped with hair. And the things that you can't see is the amount of oil and dirt that is also trapped on your brush. It is not just hair. With hair comes dirt and oil. So if you just leave that hair on there and you also never deep clean your brush, like I'm talking let it sit in some warm water and soap and actually scrub the bristles clean, you're gonna just put oil back in your scalp. So if you're showering, you're properly cleaning your hair, then you're using your brush that is filled with dirt and oils and you're brushing it from your scalp to your ends. What do you think is gonna immediately happen to your scalp. It's going to become oily extremely quickly and you're gonna wonder why because I didn't put any products on there. But in actuality, your brush is filled with oil. Guys, you have to clean it often. It's kind of a lot of work, but if you really wanna fix your oily scalp problem, you gotta clean your brush a lot, get all that hair out and actually use soap and warm water to clean it. Look up a video on how to properly do it because I don't have the time to explain it today, but do it. Don't even get me started with makeup brushes either. I go over to my friend's houses and like their makeup brushes have not been cleaned in a year and they're like, I I don't know why I have acne. Maybe because it's your fucking brushes are dirty. And lastly, let's talk about not touching your hair too much because I see a lot of people twisting their hair, raking their hair back, pushing it to the side, pushing it to the other side, putting it in a ponytail, taking it down, putting it in another ponytail, taking it down. Every time you do this, you are putting everything that's on your hands, which is a lot of oil, a lot of lotions, whatever else is on there. I don't know what you do with your life. That's your business, but you're putting it all into your hair. You would be so surprised at how much oil and lotions are on these fingertips that you are raking into your head and that is a big factor and why your hair is becoming very greasy and oily all the time very quickly. So to stop touching it so much, you can touch it once in a while, do your thing, but just know the more you touch it, the more oily your scalp is gonna get. Also avoid over brushing your hair at the root. You can always brush your ends, but don't keep going from your ends to your roots, okay? Don't go ch -ch -ch -ch. Because what's happening, again, is you're distributing those products that you have on your ends, all those oils, and then you're putting it right on top of your roots. Boom, see how that works? So that's also gonna make your hair oily. Just brush your mids and ends and don't worry about the scalp. Usually people don't have knots on the top of their head anyway, so you shouldn't really have to do that. Okay, so I know that was a lot, but hopefully this helps you balance the oils on your scalp and balance the hydration on your ends. Woo! We did it. I'm glad you came to my class today. I hope if you retook the quiz in the beginning of class, you would get an A++++.
Well, I'm sure you all would. And that's all for today, guys. Make sure to shop Hydrify Max Intensity Hydration Treatment now at xmodohair.com. And that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to live your extra life, and I'll see you next time. Bye.